All right, hi guys, welcome to our video for 9.2, Naming and Writing Formulas for Ionic Compounds. <clears throat> All right, so the first kind we're going to talk about are binary ionic compounds. Now, a binary compound means there are two elements. All right, just from bi being two, and binary usually means that there's two different things involved. So, in a binary compound you have a cation that's going to be bound to an anion and our usual example is an ACL which is sodium chloride some other examples things something like a cesium oxide copper oxide and another kind of copper oxide this is something we're going to start talking about really soon where this number represents the actual charge on that ion because a lot of the transition metals are going to have uh, various different types of charges that their ions can have. So here, right, it's Cu1 plus and here it is Cu2 plus. And you know what? I actually got these backwards. Copper 2 oxide is CuO boom and copper one oxide is Cu two O. Alright. So like other regular compounds that we've been talking about in class, you can use the crisscross method when writing out the formula for a compound. So like, let's say we take iron three oxide, right? So iron is Fe, and we say, okay, it's gonna have a charge of three. And oxygen, if you look on your reference table, it has a charge of minus two. So we just do our crisscross method. Boom, write the two, boom, write the three, and we end up with Fe2O3. If you have, there we go, calcium sulfide, right? And you have calcium and the S for sulfur. Calcium, if you look on your reference table, I have a two. Sulfur also, but a two, whoop, here we go, a two minus. So we crisscross Ca2S2. And we're going to reduce, right? So we're going to divide them both by two, end up with C A S. Nice and easy. And we've been doing some of these in class already. Okay. You can also have compounds with polyatomic ions. All right. In there, like always, the cation will be followed by the anion. And you can also balance that using the crisscross method. So here's an example, calcium nitrate. So calcium is Ca. Nitrate, if you look on your reference table, you're gonna see it's NO3 minus, and Ca tends to have a two plus. So when it says NO3 minus, right, that's a one minus. So when we crisscross, we're gonna get Ca1, NO3, I'm gonna put the whole thing in parentheses, two because the entire NO3 polyatomic ion is going to appear twice. So we end up with Ca parenthesis NO3 close parenthesis 2 because there's two of this entire thing. Two of them. Okay? Do another example. Lithium carbonate. So we write Li for lithium and carbonate CO3, and that whole thing is a 2 minus. So we crisscross, lithium is going to be a 1. So boom, 1, 2, and we end up with L, I, 2, CO3. Now, since there's only one CO3, we don't have to put that into parentheses. Alright, so now we're going to continue with uh, 
just because it's uh, also really short. Yeah. All right, so here we go with 9.3, naming and writing formulas for molecular compounds. And it makes a lot of sense to do this at the same time as the ionic because it's almost the same, but it's really good to point out the differences. So naming binary molecular compounds, right, we're usually going to be dealing with two non-metals. Right? So, but it's uh, important to realize that now, we ha since there's different kinds of compounds using the same elements, now we have to be a little more careful, right? Because like with carbon and ox oxygen, you can have CO versus CO2. So if we were to just say carbon oxide, like we do with the ionic compounds, it wouldn't necessarily work. So we have to come use prefixes. And prefixes are going to tell how many of each molecule are in the compound. All right, so here's the prefixes that are used. If there's one, mono, two, di, three, tri, four, tetra, five, penta, six, hexa, seven, hepta, eight, octa, nine, nana, and 10, deca. If you don't know these from math classes or the like, all right, then you're gonna to need to write these down in your list of things to study or your list of things to memorize on the back of your reference table. Right. Some are easy, mono, di, tri, tetra is kind of weird, pent for five is not too bad, hex and hept, not too bad, oct is easy, non is easy, and deca is kind of easy. So the hardest one that's probably going to be new to everybody is the tetra. All right, so what happens is this, one carbon, one oxygen, carbon, monoxide, carbon, dioxide, di for the two, N2O, Dinitrogen monoxide because there's no number, it's a one. And here's a big one. So there's two chlorine, so it's dichlorine, and eight oxygen, so it's eight or oct oxide. We kind of drop the A there and just say oct oxide. All right, so that's nice and easy. That's how those work. All right, so then for writing formulas, it's just going to go backwards. You're going to use the prefixes to, to determine how many of each element. So something says silicon carbide. There's no prefixes, so there's one of each. Because right? you're not always going to say monosilicone monocarbide. However, dinitrogen tetroxide means di means two. So there's going to be two N's. Tetra means four, so there's going to be four O's. So N2O4, just like we have here. All right, told you that one's going to be nice and short, nice and easy. Uh, as always, if you need to go rewind and rewatch something or write down any questions to ask me in class, please do so. See you guys in school.